the growth in population, the, the city school board decides to build high schools in all four directions, north, south, east, and west. And these are the major schools in the new emerging streetcar suburbs. So East High School emerges as a major power in local sports, local activities, and so on. It's also the school that's associated with Chick Harley, who becomes a football legend at Ohio State after being a football legend at East High School, hence Chick Harley Field. Ohio Stadium was the house that Harley built um, because he was such a, a, an outstanding player. Chick Harley moved to Columbus in 1907, and they moved into a house on Kelton. Uh, six kids in the family, uh, no indication, no reason to believe that he was going to be a star or whatever, he was just a kid. When he went to East High School as a sophomore, he was a small kid, he was 5'6", kind of a slight built kid, no reason to believe he was going to be a big huge star, although his friends knew he was a good athlete obviously and he was the fastest kid they knew, but a couple games into his sophomore year it was already obvious he was going to be a really, really good player. So he became a really big star really quickly at East, and uh, uh, they drew big crowds. I mean, they and the Northeast games would draw bigger crowds than the Ohio State games. When he went to Ohio State, there was no guarantee that he was going to be a star at Ohio State. Uh, second game of the season, they played at Illinois, which I refer to as the Big Bang of OSU football because. Uh, to that point, OSU football was not that big a deal. Drew three or 4,000 people, and uh, nobody thought they had a chance to beat Illinois. They went over to Illinois. The field was bad. It was muddy. They uh, were losing six to nothing right there toward the end of the game. Chick scores a touchdown, ties the game. And then they, he kicks the extra point to beat Illinois seven to six, and all of a sudden everybody goes crazy and they uh, come home, they have a week off, and in the week off that they had, between the time they had gone to Illinois and they, had, they were playing Wisconsin, they had to expand the Ohio field because they were selling all these tickets for the games. So all of a sudden they drew more than 10,000 for this Wisconsin game. They went through an undefeated season, drew these big crowds to every game. Chick became the, their first Consensus All-American, first team All-American. They won two Western Conference championships, which were, you know, not even thought of before that. And um, 1918, the war interrupted. Chick and most of the players on the team went off to war, came back in 1919, went undefeated again to the last game of the season when they lost to Illinois, uh, the only game Chick lost in his college career and he exhibited some traits during that game that later were associated with mental illness. He had, he had mental problems, which he ended up spending most of his life in a mental, mental hospitals. So, um, but incredible, incredible career. And as I said, three years, you know, from the time Chick got there until the time he left, Ohio State football become such a big deal that they had decided they'd go ahead and build a new stadium, and that, which of course is Ohio Stadium, so that's why they call it the house that Harley built, because if Chick hadn't come along, the stadium would never have been probably built. Chick's versatility was um, a big part of why he was a star, because he, not only was he a really fast runner, I mean, he was a track star and uh, a sprinter, but he also was a passer, and he also kicked, so, he pretty much did it all. So Chick's kind of um, emergence out of this was really pretty incredible because it, it really started the whole kind of obsession around here that we know as Ohio State football. In 1948, he came back to Columbus for a football game and they had a parade for him and they, they drew 100,000 people for this parade down Broad Street. 